morning. It is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. It is 10 a.m. and we are going to call to order the regular meeting for the Ottawa City Commission. Um, would you proceed with the roll call? Roll call, please. Commissioner Skidmore? Present. Commissioner Jorgensen? Present. Commissioner Wygan? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley? Present. And Mayor Kaler? Present. Um, we are all accounted for and glad that you are joining us today. I um, want to welcome everyone here and those that are joining us um, via social media or some other venue. Uh, we meet on the first and third Wednesday of every month. On the third Wednesday, we meet at 10 a.m. and on the first Wednesday, we meet at 7 p.m. so that um, the public, regardless of what their work schedule is, can hopefully join us. And you can always watch our meetings at other times too. We will begin our meeting as we do every single meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation which Pastor Todd Miller from Cherry Street Wesleyan will deliver for us today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, as usual, it's a, a huge honor to be with you guys here, to be in front of you, to be with such leaders as this. I have an announcement. Um, June 1st, we celebrated our sixth year of being a resident of Ottawa, Kansas, and I'm still trying to find something I don't like about this city. <laughs> it is an absolute wonderful city. I love being here. I've traveled all over the world. I've lived in many different cities, and I can't find um, anything wrong with this one so thank you and that's because of leaders like you also because of leaders before you leaders that sat in those chairs maybe not the same ones maybe the same ones I don't know <laughs> it's leaders who sat in your position and had a vision for this city such as yourself you guys are called to see into the future you're called to make policies you're called to make laws and make rules to to orchestrate a city for a future vision um, and you can't do that without the gifting of the holy spirit there's no way you can see into the future like god does so at this time let's invite him to be here to fill you uh, and to guide you in this process please bow heavenly father we do thank you for such a wonderful, wonderful city as Ottawa. Um, if it's not the best city in the world, I'd be surprised, God. And it is because of your leadership, God. It's because of you putting your Holy Spirit into leaders like these, having them to put the city over their own ambitions, having them to put the people of Ottawa over their own wants and desires, having them to listen to you um, that has made this city what it is. You've led them well through this terrible pandemic. Um, we appreciate the leadership for leading us in a way that no one knew how to go forward. Um, nothing could have prepared us for that, but you in filling your Holy Spirit into these folks led us well, and we thank you for that, God. God, I'd ask that you continue to fill these folks um, with your Holy Spirit. Um, guide them in ways that um, the people of this, of this town, this city, can just jump on board with what their vision is, and we all proceed to continue to grow this city and to make it even better than it is today. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, Pastor Miller, thank you so much. And I actually just looked at the back of my chair to remember who actually sat in my chair before that. Looks like Richard Jackson sat in your chair before you. Um, Commissioner Wigan, we all, we've used these chairs several times, but you're absolutely right. Um, we are, um, have been blessed with some wonderful leaders here before us. So thank you for your words today. That moves us on to the consent agenda, which includes minutes from June 28th, July 7th, and June, um, and June, I think it's July 12th, 
um, study session. It also includes the appointment of Dennis Tharp, um, who is our Director of Utilities to the KMGA Board of Directors. Um, are there individual or is there a person who would like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Madam Mayor, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. We approve the consent agenda. Is there any discussion? We will vote by acclamation. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. That moves us on to our regular agenda. Um, at this time during our um, meeting, we offer public comment to individuals who may want to come in and visit with the City Commission. Do we have individuals who have registered today? None today. Okay. Well, we certainly invite individuals to come in and have a conversation with us um, whenever we are meeting, whether it's a regular meeting or it's a study session. We certainly want to hear from the public of which we all serve. So uh, please come in and do so. Um, at this time, I'd like to give um, the commissioners a chance to declare any conflict or communication that you might have had that might influence your ability to, to consider today's issues impartially, which we consider the declaration as a part of our agenda. Commissioners? Seeing none, we will move forward. Item number 11, proclamation recognizing July 26, 2021 as ADA Anniversary Day. The proclamation celebrates the 31st anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Kyle Trendle, the chair of the Accessibility Advisory Board, will accept the proclamation followed by a short presentation. And I think you've got a few other individuals, Kyle, with you from the Accessibility Advisory Board. And that proclamation is going to be read by Mayor Pro Tem Crowley. And I'm going to come down there and give you this in person. And Mayor the Pro proclamation reads as follows. Whereas the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, was passed on July 26, 1990 <coughs> to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities. And whereas the City of Ottawa of the State of Kansas affirms the principles of equality, accessibility, and inclusion are essential for ensuring that all community members have access to opportunities and the ability to fully participate in community life as set forth for the State of Kansas and embodied in the ADA, the laws of the State of Kansas and the ordinances of Ottawa, Kansas. And whereas, numerous organizations in the City of Ottawa and the State of Kansas work with constituents and communities to bring forth the promise of hope and freedom that is envisioned by the passage of the ADA. And whereas the City of Ottawa formed an Accessibility Advisory Board in 2013 with current members Amy Bollinger, Lorianne Bean, John Fritz, Patrick Gardner, Marsha Hermrick, Josh Robinson, and Kyle Trindle to enhance accessibility efforts in Ottawa. And whereas accessibility should be part of all aspects of community life, physical, social, and economic, including employment, transportation, recreation, housing. And whereas we all have a role to play in ensuring that our communities are as accessible and inclusive as possible. And whereas appro approximately 12.5% of the population has a disability, which often impacts their ability to effectively access services and shopping. And whereas July 26, 2021 celebrates the 31st anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act with ADA Anniversary Day. Now, therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa, Kansas does hereby recognize the rights of all individuals with disabilities and the importance of ensuring that they access, have the access to the opportunities that are important to them and that give their lives meaning to all, the, to all observing July 26, 2021 as ADA Anniversary Day in the city of Ottawa. Sign this 21st day of July, 2021 by our, our, by our mayor, Sarah Kaler. All right, amazing, thank you. So I think we've got Marsha Hermick with us, we've got Josh Anderson, and we've got Kyle Trindle, and Robinson, here is Ms. Robinson. 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 Thank you for having us. Um, we're very thankful that you guys have uh, been as, as supportive if you have you, as you have been with our committee. And we've done a, a lot over the last handful of years since we started the program in, in 13. Um, I believe Wendy's gonna have a small presentation to kind of show you a little bit about what we've done and some of the things that we have planned. Uh, but I just want to tell you thank you for this and recognizing this and working with us um, 
to help the, the Ottawa community. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Kyle. Um, good morning, and I, I would uh, like to thank the members of the community. I know their names were read, um, but they are what keeps the energy going uh, towards our, towards our um, objectives of, of uh, enhancing our um, barrier removal. Um, all of the members, even though we had three today, which was fabulous, uh, have been a contributing part of that. And um, for the public's sake, we actually have an opening. If there's somebody out there who would like to be involved with accessibility um, advisory, we have an opening and we'd be glad to have them. Um, and I know I have a visitor who's gonna come to the next meeting, so if somebody wants to just visit and see about it, they're welcome to do that as well. Uh, they can just get in touch with me, Wendy Lee, at the direct Department of um, Community Development. Okay, so next slide, please. As uh, the governing body knows, we uh, have an accessibility, uh, trans an ADA transition plan. This is required by federal law, um, and we've had several updates to it. Um, what the plan has, it, it was initially every facility that we uh, owned was reviewed, um, as well as policies and as well as our website uh, our Facebook, et cetera, to try and uh, remove any barriers that could be identified for anyone's ability to successfully navigate a facility or any of our information uh, or any of our processes. Uh, training was done with staff back um, earlier. And then since then, we've had several uh, re-reviews or updates to our transition plan. So for example, if a building had an identified barrier and then because of a, a ability to address that with funding, that was removed, then we update the plan. Um, and we, as Kyle said, we've had the Accessibility Advisory Board um, since 2013 and then 2019. It's been several years since we've given a report, so we thought we'd go back the last couple of years and give you a little bit of that. In 2019, we actually had a training uh, of the entire board. The next slide. So as an example, I um, wanted to show that um, our, our transition plan, the fire department, police power plant, water plant, sorry for the typo, water reclamation plant, they've all completed the, uh, the projects that were identified there. In some of the cases, um, the determination was to do, if we were gonna do a facility tour, to maybe do a video of that uh, uh, because we couldn't accommodate uh, some, some disability barriers. The ones that are remaining are the ones that were more significant, more costly, or were going to simply take more time. Uh, and those are the Carnegie Cultural Center, uh, City Hall and Library, the OMA, and then we have an ongoing project to eliminate curbs at intersections. The work's happened in all four of these areas over the last few years, but we haven't completely eliminated all the identified barriers. Next slide. So just because we thought it would be, you know, these are sometimes budget things, and so we've shared them with you, but just for the public's benefit, we thought in case <coughs> anybody starts to hear about a project and doesn't realize that that, that, that was also something that uh, was a removal and part of our ADA transition plan. Um, the, the last things uh, for City Hall are to eliminate the women's, men and women's restroom on the second floor right at the top of the stairs and create an accessible restroom there prefabricated stair insulation to the basement and then a change in the elevator car uh, indication. Both projects um, listed here are anticipated that they could, if, if we don't have any failures of anything, be accomplished in 2022. At the Carnegie, um, because of some varying floors and grades over there, it's a little bit more challenging to try and figure out whether chairlifts or restroom, uh, sorry, or elevators is, is what's the most successful thing we can do with a building that's also on the register. Um, um, but we have identified that we would probably need um, an elevator, which is a significant expense to really do that properly. Um, 25 years ago, we, we actually had a grant for that, and so there may be an opportunity someday to do that <coughs> again. Uh, the restroom that was constructed in the remodel years ago does not meet the technical specifications, so we really need to work on that as well. Um, at the OMA, um, one of our uh, buildings that has the most crowds uh, any time, um, we really need to do an elevator and or chair lifts for each level. Um, we need to make a change at the concessions counter. Uh, we need some wheelchair locations and companion seating in the main hall and work on an audio assistive listening. These two are on their list, both for 
at the CIP and or uh, as construction funds become available. Next slide. Um, we still have some uh, parks projects as well, um, but we have completed a lot of our parking lot and um, parks projects. As you all know, as we've uh, replaced playground equipment, we've worked hard to be sure that we are building uh, either at the least an accessible, you can get to it, or an inclusive playground, depending on the type of playground and its location. Um, there are some incomplete ones that we haven't, haven't really addressed. This gazebo, for example, City Park, um, it's, it's rarely used now. Um, for, it was being used a lot for concerts, but even for them, that's a difficult thing with the number of stairs there. Um, access to Dietrich is 95% uh, done. So actually, that's one that has just been addressed um, with a, I believe, and I don't know if Mike's here, with a scout, uh, scout project. There's some projects over at Orlis Cox Field, um, some, way, some ways where sidewalks could be installed. Uh, Forest Park really had to do with that, an addition of a, of a walkway instead of using the roadway. Uh, Freedom Park, that's actually, as you know, slated to be um, completely uh, redone this year, and so that would be accomplished this year. Um, and Haley, access to the landing where sometimes we Santa reads or there's a music uh, performer. Next slide. As you know, we just kind of talked about this. Um, Accessibility Advisory Board uh, generally meets quarterly. Over COVID, we did not meet. Um, but we, we met again here about a month ago, um, and every year we adopt a, a uh, goals uh, sheet that kind of talks about the kinds of things that we'd like to do. One of those is usually coming to you with a proclamation as an opportunity to remind the public that the board exists um, and that they are working on projects. There are other things that people will call us about. Um, some of that just ends up being referred back to me uh, as a coordinator at this point um, to, to visit with a business owner, for example. It's not the board's job to actually go do that, but if somebody had an issue at a particular business and they wanted to mention that to one of the board members, that's fine. Uh, that board member will pass it on to me and I'll try to get in touch with the person. Um, oftentimes, for example, Marsha will have an observation. Um, she observed something. We've done some extra things, for example, at the OMA that aren't required by law, but may yet help someone with an accessibility. And so we appreciate those comments, especially from her as a board member, but also from the public. There could be something that is just making something difficult. Um, and the owner, the person responsible, simply didn't anticipate that that was creating a barrier. So we like to facilitate those easy to uh, change things. Next slide. Was that the last one? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we had a curb cut one. Um, the Public Works Department works hard on this annually. Um, you probably see this at times. I know that, for example, Richard and I walked downtown and we caught an area where uh, at intersections we were accessible, but at an alley, a curb had been missed. And so we identify those to Public Works. If there's members of the public who would like to, um, who are having a barrier issue, at a particular intersection, they just need to get a hold of uh, the Public Works Department and let them know. If they're trying to make their way to a specific destination and there are barriers, we can work on those. Otherwise, they work through kind of a grid system. If you see the image where they work outward and they work on particular areas, uh, if they're already doing a Public Works or um, utilities project in an area, then we try to address those curbs at the, t at the same time. You'll notice, I think they've been down at uh, 13th and Cedar uh, there's been some replacement right there. Um, and again, they've, they've lit, they gave us the list of some on Mulberry, Poplar, uh, that was North Mulberry, uh, Poplar West 6th, South Walnut, 403 South Elm, at the intersections of North Hickory uh, and Red Jacket. Uh, there were some replacements in the last year as well, but a every year they work on that and, and we appreciate that as well as other requests from the public. So we just wanted to take an opportunity to kind of let the public know again that this work is happening. We are continuing to fulfill our transition plan um, and, and we appreciate your support in doing that. Any questions I can answer? If somebody from the public were to have questions or comments or have suggestions, where would they go? Uh, a couple of places they could go to our website um, but if they wanted to just make a phone call um, our number is 229-3620 and they can be directed to me um, and then if they need public works I'd be happy to transfer them uh, if they want to email um, they can uh, be happy to take that email my email is wlee 
at ottawacast.gov. Um, but anybody in the building, uh, if they're in here and we see in the library and they ask at the front counter, um, we're happy to meet with anybody or, or come talk to them about what we're doing. You know, a few years ago we uh, did some, I, I think we called it experimental uh, locations, one by the Plaza Theater and one by Rex's Barbershop. Mm -hmm. uh, are there plans to do those in other blocks? Uh, it's usually if, if some of the owners in that block um, request it, then they'll look into it um, because it does eliminate some parking. So there's, you know, they have to kind of weigh that out for themselves. Mm -hmm. But um, yes, we ch have exceeded um, the required um, disabled parking downtown, That's but we're happy to consider house. additional ones at any time if somebody really wants to do that. The, the downside is um, oftentimes someone may make a request because of a specific building, but we have to remember that a specific uh, retailer, those things move from time to time. Um, so that's why they are mostly found on the side streets um, so that someone's not forced out into um, traffic as much as possible, as much as we can. But it, those are really nice additions um, in the 100, 200 and 300 block. want to park near where they need to get into a drugstore, get into a travel right. company, or get into the courthouse. The courthouse mm -hmm. has got them, but you yes. got to find them. And well, and that's largely because they're usually, I mean, they're required to be at the, the best place for the whole path of travel, so for like the courthouse. So part of the reason they do that is because they have ramps nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be that it's not where you want to park for the front door, but the nearest accessible route is where that parking is often found. Yeah, good job. Thank, thank you. you for the update, and thank you, Josh Robinson, <laughs> Kyle Trendall, and Marsha. Hermrick for um, for serving all of our citizens. We appreciate it, and everybody who's on the who's on the board. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. That moves us on to item 12 on our agenda. Consideration of motion to waive section 12-501 of Housing Overlay District for the Coves. The considerations are listed below. The HOO, the Housing Overlay District in Article 12 of the Zoning Regulations, 12-404, lot per household. Every single household dwelling or residence established shall provide a minimum lot of 5,800 square feet per household. Every two household dwellings or residence shall establish a minimum, of, minimum lot of 3,700 um, square feet per household. And every three household dwelling or residents shall establish a minimum lot of 2,900 square feet per household. And the new incentive that, it, or the actually, the revised um, incent, or incentive is actually listed below that, which is section 12-5, additional incentives 12-501, upon application to the zoning administrator, any of the requirements of 12-4 may be reduced by the zoning administrator up to 20%, to accommodate um, residential development upon satisfactory evidence um, that there is 25% of the dwellings may be constructed in the HO-O district um, will be priced to serve those earning 50% or less um, of the most recent Franklin County median income. My apologies, that's not necessarily the change. City Manager Mike Neinstead. Your mic. Well, that's a good reminder for you all, too. We, we've been getting complaints from people who can't hear, so please remember to move up and talk into your mic for the public and turn them on. <laughs> so, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, uh, City Attorney Finch is with us virtually today. He is signed in on Zoom, and he will lead you through this item. Good morning, Mayor and Commissioners. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. So, uh, the land bank trustee has made a recommendation to the city that you consider waiving this section 12-501 uh, requirement in the uh, City of Ottawa zoning regulations. Uh, every zoning district in the city has a minimum lot size requirement. In the Housing Opportunity Overlay District, the O-O District, 
uh, that is 5,800 square feet. Um, you have set up a provision in the Indico Dasho Zip District that a developer or owner can have a lot up to 20% smaller than that 5,800 square feet. Uh, and if, if they do that and get that waiver from the zoning administrator from this leaf, the caps could be 25% of all of the buildable lots uh, will be used to build houses that would serve uh, people making less than uh, the median income in the county. So they would essentially be uh, moderate to low income housing uh, for uh, those 25% of the lots. So the land bank trustees have asked you for waiving that requirement uh, because many of the lots in the Cove subdivision are, are not 5,800 square feet, uh, although I think all of them could meet within the 20% the reduction. So the question is, how do you go about doing that? What is the manner of acting by which you can, can change that requirement? And uh, I sent you a memorandum uh, yesterday. There are three ways you can do that. Um, all of them requiring the passage of a new ordinance. The Cove subdivision was placed in the HO-O district by ordinance, and so ordinance must be used to change that or deviate from that. You can change the requirement. You can pass a new ordinance that says the provisions of 12-501 do not apply to this subdivision, basically exempt that one section. You could remove the coves entirely from the HO-O district. In other words, repeal the prior ordinance that put it there, uh, but then you're into a situation where your minimum lot sizes uh, would probably need to be a little bit larger. I would not recommend that approach. The third approach is simply to remove 12-501 from the zoning regulations altogether to the HO-O district uh, and just allow for a, a deviation in size uh, of about 20%. 5,800 square feet minimum lot size threshold. Uh, the first approach, simply going back and amending the prior law to exempt those from, from 12501 is the quickest. Uh, that could be done. I would recommend you allow the Planning Commission to give comment on that, but they would not have to hold a public hearing. The second one has some unintended consequences that I would, I would not recommend. It might end up making the minimum lot size larger than you want it to be. And the third one takes the most time, although it's the most comprehensive solution, you should need to go to the Planning Commission uh, and should have a public hearing uh, and then come back to you for action. So those are kind of the three options uh, in terms of waiving this requirement if you want to honor the request of the land bank trustees. And with that, I would say that's the question. Commissioners, do you have questions? Uh, uh, Mr. Finch, I do have a question. Um, the the coves, uh, the uh, the lots that have been platted, I believe the coves is a larger subdivision uh, that had a, a possible plat. If we uh, um, remove or exempt, uh, can we exempt the existing lots um, um, from that without addressing the phase two and phase three um, that, that are in the same subdivision? Provided there, uh, yes, Commissioner Jordan's been provided there are uh, there's a legal description of the phases. Uh, the original ordinance, which puts this land under the HO uh, district, included just kind of a meets and bounds legal description. I'm not sure if that includes the phase two and three. Uh, we can certainly describe it by the platted uh, phase one of the plat of, of the code subdivision. Uh, so, yes, you could do treat the phases differently um, if you, as long as you do so in the, in the proper method. And I do believe Ms. Lee can speak to the fact that I think the Planning Commission is kind of considering this issue of minimum lot sizes as well. And so this, this third option that I mentioned to you that may take some time, I think they're probably looking at this on a, on a more global scale. So if you wanted to address phase one now, phases two and three may be recommended for different action in the future based on what the Planning Commission is looking at uh, currently kind of globally around the city. The, the zoning district was applied to all of the land at the time because it was previous to the, the platting. Um, what we call the coves right now that the land bank has been involved with is really only phase one. Um, so your ordinance, we could either call out the phase one or allow it to go and understand that the phase two and three, um, they have a preliminary plat, um, but they have not final platted. So they could even adjust and, and may well anyway before they were to final plat. Um, 
as the city attorney and I visited, the discussion about lot sizes and how to move forward would be including this HOO, but it is much broader conversation altogether. Um, and it will take several more months. They're, they're not even to a point where they're willing to call a hearing. They're, they're still in research and discussion phase. Um, and, and it just simply is not at all ready. It, it, in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if they're not ready to have that conversation until like December. Um, it, it takes a while to research something when you're talking about changing our minimum lot size for a single family lot, 7,500 or, or 7,000 depending. And it has been that for decades. So it's a significant change and warrants that kind of time. Um, I think that's really why uh, when we, we conversed, we thought if you just want it to apply to the Cove's lots, we can um, change and create a new ordinance to do that um, at your direction or to the entire um, Cove's preliminary plan, if you like. Okay. Uh, one more question. Um, if we, the um, uh, exempting the existing, the remaining lots and then also uh, having the, the planning commission, I mean, those can happen, those can both happen, correct? Yes, the planning commission actually has a study session next week, and so when we discussed, it really would not take any time for them to at least be apprised of the conversation and to further converse. I've talked with both the, uh, Sarah Anjacek, who's the staff assigned to the planning commission, as well as the chair of the planning commission about this specific topic in the context of the broader topic that they're already working on but it would allow us to bring all of the planning commission along to that conversation to bear that in mind as they look at these things. And I, I lied, I have one last question. Um, <laughs> how, how long is the, uh, the process uh, to exempt the lots? Uh, how, how long of a process would that be? Just creating drafting the ordinance and, and the city attorney's offer to do that. He's got the old ordinance numbers so that he, he can address that. So that we could uh, look at action um, at our next uh, regular meeting. I think so. Yes, that, okay. that would be our and that would be our intent if that's the direction you'd like okay. to go. All right, thank you. Commissioners, other questions? What is the will of the commission on this matter? Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, my I don't know if it's a motion, but I, my recommendation is, or I would be in favor of having the uh, the city attorney draft a uh, a. Uh, resolution to exempt uh, the coves phase one from the requirements of the, sp of, uh, of the uh, as as indicated in section 12-5 a resolution an ordinance maybe yeah whatever is necessary mm -hmm. commissioners are you in consensus with that it's not a vote but second the, the, the no second I don't think it's a motion it's just a so we'll look at move it, it forward meeting. yeah yes Okay, well, it looks like the way that we're going to go. That was for you, Monday. All right, thank you. All right, so that moves us on to item 13. Request for approval of 2021 land bank budget. Staff will review the details of the proposed budget for the land bank that is being proposed by the trustees. Thank you. Included in the packet was the, or in your previous communication, was the land bank proposed budgets. And because this is new for this year, that requires us to have a discussion about the 2021 budget as well as the 2022 budget. I think the focus of today was just approval of the 2021 budget um, to approve that so that the land bank th can then move ahead with the um, items that are in front of them for decision making. The way that this was proposed for both the land bank committee and trustees, as well as you as commissioners, um, is to give you the most flexibility for making those decisions for what can occur with the land bank. So everything that's in your proposed 2021 budgets are estimates, no decisions have been made there. Everything would be um, a available for us to have some, I guess, <coughs> movement on those decisions. So um, included in here would be revenues generated from potential sale of the property, as well as expenditures related to potential transfer to cover debt service or any other option that you decide to do with that. As a special fund, whatever you um, bring in and or do or do not expend will roll over to your beginning fund balance for 2022. 
as an item um, that would be upcoming for you would be um, amending, going through the actual amendment process with the state budget to establish this fund as a true budgeted fund. Um, so your approval today will just help us move in that direction. That would include a public hearing and then the amended, amended budget process for which we have some other potential amendments to do as well. So we would include those all together at one time at some later date. Commissioners, do you have questions for Ms. Landis? or our city manager regarding um, this proposed budget? I don't think so, so I would entertain a motion if there is one. So moved. Commissioner Pro, or Mayor Pro Tem Crowley moves. Is there a second? I'll second. And Commissioner Wigand seconds. Is there any discussion among commissioners? Seeing none, we will proceed to vote. How do you vote, Commissioner Wigand? I vote yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Jorgensen? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley? Yes. And Mayor Kaler? And I vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That moves us on to um, item 14, which is our report by our city manager, City Manager Neistat. What do you have for us today? Mayor and Commissioners, I have three items for you. The first one is um, the housing report that you received from FCDC on Monday. I will place on your agenda Monday and put it under your time. And uh, that will at least give you some time to discuss whatever you want to discuss about that. And uh, you will likely see it several different times on your agenda till you get it discussed through to where you want to get it discussed through. It, uh, I would tell you this. It, take a look at the document. Look at it. There are some, um, um, it, it is always interesting to look at the data. The, the data is important, the recommendations are important, and it merits you having a serious discussion about the report and some of the conclusions. And, and um, I would tell you, I'm not sure that a lot of people remember this. I wasn't here, so I get it anecdotally, but I believe that Commissioner Jorgensen is the one that was on that commission then. Coves came out of a community housing study, which I believe was led by another banker, and there were a number of business people on that committee, and as I recall, um, they centered in on workforce housing at that time, and that was one of the reasons why Coves came about, and the governing body did what they did to help um, move the Coves development along. So um, these are important. Those ideas are important. Um, second thing is um, you will um, likely see me wearing my mask more. I want to follow up on a remark that Commissioner Wigan made at Monday's meeting. Uh, we are in the middle of a surge. Uh, apparently most of it has to do with uh, um, the, the variant, the COVID variant. And people say, well, why are you wearing a mask if you're vaccinated? I would ask people to go back to the science. Go back to the science. It is not 100% vaccination. No vaccination is 100%. So I believe the one vaccination that I got was 95%. So uh, the first reason is I'm doing what I can to mitigate that other 5%. But I think if you wear your mask, that that sends a reminder to the unvaccinated, especially, that this is the best protection for yourself and others, but not the quality protection that you could have and that's to get a vaccination so there you go that's enough on that and then a little historical note on this day 71 years ago my parents were married at Chicago City Hall my older brother was there my dad was stationed at 5th Army headquarters in Chicago they were both Kansas young people. Dad was uh, from Emporia, mom was from Fredonia, and they got married a month into the Korean War. 
So there you go. That's a little bit of history. It's a date that I remember. Were it not for them, you would not have me. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should thank them. Give thanks to them for that uh, for that union. Um, that moves us on to reports by our city commissioners. Mayor Pro Tem Crowley. I have no report. Thank you. Commissioner Wygan. Uh, I have no uh, official report, but uh, in regard to uh, Richard's uh, Korean War, war uh, I recall where I was when I heard that we had uh, trouble in Korea and when President Truman was going to uh, send troops. I was in La Crosse, Kansas mm. on a very hot day in that time. But anyway, I uh, appreciate your remarks <coughs> about the mask and uh, still encourage people to get the vaccine. It's safe. Well, we're glad you made it back from lacrosse. No, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Skidmore. I don't know if anybody in the room happens to know the status of the bridge construction. I assume we're in one week and we know for sure it's going to be done this week. I, I, Mike I don't think didn't it's hear. done. I think it's moving. I think construction is moving <coughs> from one side <coughs> to the other side. Right, but they're closed for the, this week. Oh, They'll reopen yes. next week. So plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it looks like we have Mr. Hayfleet. Mr. Hayfleet, tell oh, us all about it. What you got for us? Commissioners, I will share with you the information that I have. The, the plan is still to open at the end of this week uh, to allow traffic one way. It'll still be controlled with uh, traffic lights. What they're doing is they're, I think they've got the, uh, the westbound lane poured. They're waiting for uh, cure time and, and reset up so that they can open that, open that uh, eastbound lane up for, for traffic, it'll still be controlled with traffic lights. It'll still be one way after they open because they still have the other side to, to do yet. Okay, great, thanks. So, Mr. Michael, Hape this is a KDOT project, yes, correct? Yes, this that is correct, Commissioner. This is a KDOT project, uh, KDOT let, KDOT paid for, KDOT controlled. I think that means we might have sat up here too long because that was my exact yeah. question. <laughs> Commissioner Jorgensen, is there uh, more that you have, Commissioner Skidmore? Okay, Commissioner okay, Jorgensen. Thanks. I do have a question. I'm sorry to put you on the spot like this, but uh, can you give us an update on our street cleaner? Mr. Hayfley? The Yes, Commissioner, it's Mike Hayfley, Public Works Director. Uh, I talked to Key Equipment yesterday. The uh, sweeper has been return to them from Freightliner. They're trying to clean the place out in the shop so that they can get it in there and get the last remaining sweeper parts on it. Uh, they're putting a part on it that, and I'll explain this as best I can. When we lift the head up that vacuums the, the debris off the, off the street, there, there's an attachment that, or a new head that goes on to it that when it lifts up, instead of blowing the debris out, it will, and, and causes, causing that debris to, to go up and circle up, up up underneath the cab, it's supposed to blow it, actually blow it back to the, towards the rear of the machine, plus suck it up. So um, hopefully to, the intent of that part is to uh, eliminate any, any more fire hazards. Okay. So uh, they've got, once they can get it into their shop, they're gonna have about three, three days to install that and then we should get it back once they confirm that it, everything is working properly on it. So we're talking a week or two or? or I, I'm hoping within the next week and a half to two weeks we will get it back. Well that's that's great news. Uh, thank you Mike. You bet, you bet. I don't have anything further. Okay great um, and on to report by the mayor. Um, I was not present at our last meeting uh, our last official meeting and I wanted to um, thank officially the members of the Chautauqua Days um, committee. I know that they put, they work year round to put on um, the Chautauqua Day or the Chautauqua Festival um, around or on 4th of July and I appreciate them bringing that back. I know that Tiffany um, Evans had a huge part of that but I also know that there were many, many, many citizens that had um, huge contributions to that. So thank you for being a part of that and um, for selling, celebrating our Independence Day. And um, we appreciate it now, and we look forward to it next year. Mayor? Yes. I'm sorry, I, I, I forgot uh, yes. something uh, further. 
Um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank uh, the volunteers and city staff who uh, um, uh, pulled weeds at the uh, at the Legacy Square. Um, it had uh, had gotten out of um, uh, a little unruly, and uh, especially when you're uh, uh, dependent upon volunteers to uh, to keep. Uh, <coughs> Uh, the weeds down and so forth sometimes uh, that doesn't occur in a timely manner but uh, um, I, I uh, Michael I, I think a, a number of your staff went and uh, and, and and pulled weeds for uh, a few hours one day last week and I know the master gardeners uh, and Wendy uh, volunteered her time um, uh, and uh, had some friends help pull weeds as well but uh, uh, thank you for doing that, and uh, it, it made a huge difference in the appearance of, of the, the Legacy Square um, area. Absolutely. You took those words right out of my mouth. I appreciate um, you uh, sending those thanks out. Um, I, that's all that I have for the report by the mayor right now, except for to read announcements, which we have at noon today. We have <coughs> our city, county, school board um, luncheon hosted at USD 290. On the 26th, we have a study session. We did just before this meeting add an additional meeting, which will be on the 28th. And I know that those that would like public notice will get that public notice, but I'm going to, to tell you now that we have a land bank meeting on the 28th at 515. Then on the 2nd of August, which I can't believe it's almost August, but um, we have study session on the uh, at 4 p.m. on the 2nd. And on the 4th, we have our regular meeting at 7 p.m. If there's nothing else to be brought forth to the commission today, we will adjourn today's meeting. Thank you for attending. Those were some of the fireworks on the display.